Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. <clears throat> Let me tell you guys, it feels super good to be recording again. Uh, my schedule is all over the place lately, and when I have to go a few days or a week or something without recording, it uh, I feel bad. I feel like I'm not fulfilling my end of a bargain I made or something. Uh, so let's just have a quick look. Like I said, uh, it's been a little while. <laughs> Let me refresh my uh, refresh my memory here. The status of everything. So we've got some people with some diseases that I don't care about. Lethargy, minus four speed is enough that it's annoying. Let's figure out what we're going to be doing uh, for, for this week's adventure, and then I'll figure out if I want to uh, take that off of her now. Hmm. That's a pretty okay trinket. Uh, you know what? Before I forget, oh, let me just say, very excited. Uh, I am recording this uh, the same day that it will go up, so January 14th. Uh, very excited. We are less than a week away from formal release, from actually knowing what the Darkest Dungeon is. Uh, yeah, I could not be more excited. As you can probably tell, I really, really like this game. I have uh, I've played a tremendous amount of it, uh, and I'm just really, really excited to see what they have in store for the end game. So I think we're gonna do a level one mission today. Um, this episode, I should say, because I really do want to get another um, vestal up. Right, we lost our vestal recently. I like to say we because it makes it feel like it's not my fault. But you guys, it's a hundred percent my fault. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's. We no longer have a reason to keep anybody below level three. Um, previously, we were trying to keep a stable roster of dudes at level two for boss fighting, but of course, we have now cleared all the bosses. So, um, I think this is going to be our party for now. This is a good, solid, versatile party. Let me make sure. I do. I do want to unlock if it bleeds. Uh, are there any other changes that need to be made? He's fine. She's fine. She's fine. Um, most of these people are not very upgraded, but honestly, I don't. Th I don't see a particular need to upgrade them as we're going out here on this um, this level one. This should be uh, this green level. I should say it should be pretty easy. I mean, as long as we've got her dragged into the thing. The uh, first level of these upgrades costs almost nothing, so why not, right? Also, we have a hole in our roster. There's a hole in my boat. Do we want to... No. I think I'd like to recruit another Vestal, maybe? So what do I have? Do I just have one now? Yeah, Vestals are, are versatile and powerful. I would like to recruit another Vestal. So we'll uh, we'll keep that slot open until another one comes in over the thing. Uh, so... In case I haven't mentioned it yet, as I suppose uh, for anybody who hasn't noticed, the way the, the, the trinket rewards for missions work is uh, green no camp missions reward a normal common. Uh, these trinkets are worth uh, 1500 I believe. Uh, 1125 sorry, 1125 um, Orange no camps or green one camps reward uncommon trinkets, which sell for more. 50, these are the 1500s. Uh, or, or green two camps, or orange one camps, or uh, red no camps, reward blues, which are uh, another another price upward, what, 2250, yeah. Like, you can see the jump gets pretty sharp. And then after blue is your oranges, which sell for 3750, uh, many of which are very powerful. And then beyond that, there is a there is a quality called ancestral, which you're going to get primarily from finding the shambler. That's the easiest way to get ancestrals. It might be the only way to get ancestrals. I can't remember. It's been a like I said, I've played a lot of the game and I've maxed out, but I did that a long time and many many patches ago was the last time I maxed out a a thing. So I don't actually know if the orange level bosses or if the uh, the red level bosses, the level five bosses, only give you. An orange still, or if they give you ancestrals, I don't. I don't know uh, how the end of the game all works exactly anymore. Um, so this is not bad. Basically, this 
strongly encourages you to build your highwayman as a guy who uses uh, open vein basically all the time, except on enemies who are nearly bleed immune, and then you use the other melee skill, which I actually almost never use. I think I've I've not used it in a very long time. What is it even called? Wicked Slice. Because it has the same um, base accuracy as Open Vein, but it doesn't have a negative damage mod, and it has a higher crit. It's not a bad attack. It's just that uh, in a lot of cases, the bleed from Open Vein is going to cause Open Vein to do more damage on average than... Wicked Slice, but Wicked Slice has the advantage of being able to do a tremendous amount of burst damage, and as you level up and a crit means more and more added damage, I bet there is a breakpoint where Wicked Slice is doing more damage on average. Um, like, once you have skill rank 4 and a, and a Bracer on or something, you know? Uh, speaking of Bracers, what do we got trinkets-wise? You are wearing a trinket that clearly you are only wearing because I was trying to jam it into my inventory to sell. Um, let's give you a warrior's cap. Trinket didn't want to come out of her inventory, but I tricked it. I don't know. 10% 10, 10 HP. This is going to be a long one. It, it might behoove us to, to give these people a little something. Uh, she probably, she is the one who needs stuff the least. She is upgraded all the hell because I, I was using her to fight bosses. Um... So she needs the least help. We're going to give everybody a little bit of love here. So... This is pretty good. Uh, minus 20% debuff resist may as well be blank against green level monsters. You don't see any really scary levels, or really scary debuffs at this level. Um... You're probably fine. Is there anything else that's like obviously compelling? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a no-brainer, right? That's an amazing item. Uh, do you care? Do you have anything? She's not going to be our trap disarmer, but 20% scouting chance for one speed is actually a trade I will totally make here. Uh, she's at zero dodge, so minus four dodge doesn't mean anything. As you see, dodge doesn't go negative, it just stays at zero. So that's just minus 10% stress damage plus 4% accuracy. If anybody's gonna not overstress, it should be her, right? What do you want? Do you have something cool available to you? This doesn't, that's not really valuable. Yeah, all right. So just some light stuff. Um, I could equip them super hard, right? But. I suppose there's not really a great reason to do that other than uh, laziness. I'm just being lazy, I don't want to move my trinkets around. Uh, on a long mission, I do like- I, I honestly, I just generally, I buy all the food that they offer. That's not something that changed either. Um, it used to be, before a patch or two ago, that um, you weren't limited on buying stuff. Um, and I have always bought as many stacks of food as you could, as there were um, firewood stacks plus one, because that is what I found useful. I don't know, man. Keys are very useful in the ruins to the point that I am actually going to buy another one. You find all kinds of stuff to interact with with keys. I would probably bring bandages to um, level three or level five missions, but these guys going in for this. Uh, for this cloak, I'm sure they'll be fine without it. The without must them. be driven back. And what better place to begin than the, the seat, seat of our noble, noble line. line? Also, I've heard everyone of Wayne June's lines like a thousand times. And they still they get me right here. You guys couldn't see, but I was indicating the um, you know, the lower part of the heart. Which is either the, the cockles or the subcockle region. I'm not a biologist. Uh, the downside of bringing a lot of gear on a uh, on a long mission, and part of the reason that I didn't why did I walk into this room without torching? And part of the reason that I didn't bother to uh, buy anything else for them is that you are going to fill your inventory like for sure on a two camp mission, absolutely without question. Hmm, who do I want to give this to? Now let's give it to that. Well, hold on a second. 
So the Arbalest is for sure going to be attacking people most of the time. Uh, Battlefield Bandage is a thing you really only use in Desperation if you have a Vestal in the party, right? So probably it should go to her. Uh, interacting with this thing gives you a buff. Using Holy Water on it gives you more buff. Yeah, let's take more buff. Get that 30% damage. If you do not Holy Water, you only get 20% damage. It's still great. Hey, finally we get some scouting. Finally, I've been through like two whole rooms already and nobody knows nothing. What's going on here? Sure. Uh, okay, well, that makes that decision quickly. I wonder how this works. It's a confessional booth. You sit in it. You sit in it and apparently remember all of the terrible shit you've done in your past. Listen, she looks like a battle nun, right? But don't be surprised. People become nuns for a reason, and usually that reason is, uh overbearing weight on their conscience. Or to evade a marriage proposal. Okay, you gotta stop touching everything. She's curious? Yeah. Curious is one of those, uh, one of those really annoying ones. It has a, I believe it has a lower chance of firing than the ones that target specific categories of trinkets. And I'm intentionally letting the torch burn down here a little bit. Um... I believe it has a lower chance to fire, but it can fire on anything. And that's just incredibly annoying. So we do have to go all the way to the end here. Um, this is a room battle, as is this. All of the symbols that aren't empty gray room mean room battle, unless you are on a mission that involves interacting with curios, like the one where you have to pick up the medicine, or the one where you have to destroy the evil idols. In those cases, this symbol sometimes means a room that has the mission objective curio and does not have a fight. Only sometimes, though. So the question is, how much do I want to torch? Where do I want to make first camp? Because I do want to... She has, um... Oh, she doesn't have restring crossbow. Actually, hold up. Okay, so we have mostly relief skills. We don't actually have, aside from Sharpen Spear, we don't actually have a lot of buffs. So with this party, it behooves us to um, wait out our camps until we, uh, until we actually need the relief. Which is good and fine. We're going to kill the Bone Courtier before he gets a turn. I'm going to stun one of these guys. He has 13 dodge. I guess I can't be sure that we're going to get the kill. But I'm going to try real hard. Alright, so we have two attacks, and he has six health, and I didn't equip her with the right abilities. Damn it. Let's lay into this guy, maybe. Alright, she she one-shotted him. Okay, everything's fine. Everything's going well. Um, and after this battle, I'm going to reassign our Hellion skills. This is probably still going to work. Yeah. Uh, how, the cudgel thing is ridiculous. Um, honestly, I'm gonna have her heal herself in the hopes of a crit heal that would relieve some stress. Oh, I suppose that I should have just judgmented. That gives me two chances. I'm, uh, a little out of practice, guys. I apologize for the subpar play. Let's kill him with the bolas. Wow! Broken. What the fuck? The I mean, uh, sorry for the language, but that was, uh, that was a 13 damage... Shot with a minus fifty damage, minus fifty percent damage attack. That was a large, that was a larger number than I was expecting to see here. I'm gonna do this. I know this is like exactly how I have my other Hellion built, and I don't mean to uh, imply by this that there's only one correct way to build a Hellion. Hellions have lots of useful skills. In particular, I want to say that the skill I just took off is actually really great, and uh, Adrenaline Rush has obvious. Uh, obvious value, especially once you start getting into the yellow and red missions. Breakthrough is fantastic for a party that lacks AoE damage, as this one does. But basically what I'm saying is I made the wrong decision because it's really easy to play a Hellion who's set up this way. Okay, who's, who's Trap Guy? I think it's probably you. 90, 70... You know what? Go for it. Get that stress relief. Because she has that book, right? She's a big reader. Okay, so, how dark do I want it to be when I get here? I'm going to 
I'm gonna use two torches. This will put us at a comfortable light level for this fight. Okay, and not a very difficult fight either. The courtiers are high high priority. Uh, stress casters, and these these bone rabble are basically irrelevant. Uh, I really wish she could stun the one who hadn't taken his turn yet, but no such luck. Fortunately, we can just kill it. Continually onslaught. Destroy them all. Okay, fight's basically over. Yeah, nobody's afraid of bone rabble. They can still crit us, and thereby confidence surges as the enemy uh, deal some stress damage. So we don't want to like goof around here. But these things are not dangerous. I'm gonna goof around a little bit. We're gonna try to give the killing blow to the Vestal. Get that little bit of stress relief. The game gives you all these tools for managing your stress. Why not use them? Press disadvantage. Give them no quarter. Okay, three. Um, judgment, in particular, is a great skill for stress relief because it. Um... Is it merely a trick of the light. Wayne. Shh, buddy. Uh, judgment's a great skill because you get stress relief for a killing blow, you get stress relief for a critical hit, and you get stress relief for a critical heal. Uh, judgment is definitely the way you should go if you are trying to relieve stress on your Vestals. You should not have them cast Divine Grace on themselves like some kind of idiot. I don't remember what these do, but I do remember that Holy Water is what you do. with. Okay. She lost a quirk, and it wasn't Curious. That's a shame. Actually, it wasn't any of these, which would have been... Or, I don't care about Thanatophobia that much. But it would not It would have been cool if it was one of these. Gambler's not a big deal, although um, the bad outcomes for gambling are kind of annoying, certainly. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Hey, look. A couple of actual enemies, along with the Bone Rabble. Uh, you have 10% stun resist. Let's stun this guy and just try to kill the Arbalest. We might be able to kill him before he gets a turn. That would be cool. Actually, never mind. We got two stunners. Let's just stun both of the real enemies. And there we go. Stun avoid and an attack. Where an, atta an attack on our part would not have prevented that attack from happening unless we'd gotten a... Uh, Honestly, with the Houndmaster, even a crit might not have been able to do 15 damage. A little bit of overkill. It's fine. Just ring his bell a little bit. Houndmaster doesn't care about your your buff. Huh. There's a chance of her getting this kill. She got there. She almost killed the rebel at the same time. And we get to get the killing blow on our uh, Vestal, who needs the needs the stress relief. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. I would rather have 1150 gold than a single holy water. No question. Yes, I know. You're very curious how boxes and booths and benches and Do you want to do you want to say something about the door before we No, you get okay. Hey look, a treasure chest. Tempting Goblet not on the Vestal is my favorite kind of Tempting Goblet right now. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get rid of him. He's too annoying. Mm. We use this to prevent that guy. Uh, these guys do a little bit more damage on a crit than I like to take. It would be best if they didn't uh, didn't get to shoot us very much. Dazed. Reeling. As you can see, that's not exactly a mind-blowing amount of damage. Uh, bone Soldier, not Bone Rabble. More dangerous. Not, you know, like a lot more dangerous, but more dangerous. Uh, the Vestal is probably going to heal our Hellion, actually. She's got nine. That's probably enough. But I have been uh, I've been burned a couple of times in the recent past by playing a little too loose with people's health. That's a lot of the game is figuring out how how much you can uh, how much damage you can just carry around safely. 
Because, as always, offensive action is better than defensive action, except in the case where defensive action prevents somebody from dying. Survive, kill. And then, you know, after that, if you still got actions left, I don't know. Heal people or distribute buffs or something. Um, is worth noting, just, just to repeat, I know I'm kind of a broken record. Uh, so do I want to try to crit heal? No, let's let's go for the actual heal. Again, I want to get the killing blow of my Vestal. Still no crits. Her crit rate's not terrible either. Remind yourself let's see that here. overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Well, something in our inventory is not worth the amount of money that a full stack of gold would give us. I think it's two busts because. Busts are just the least valuable of the heirlooms, uh, by a pretty large margin. The question is, do I want to discard something for Onyx? You know, maybe it's, um... Maybe it's all anecdotal, but I feel like Onyx are more common than Emeralds. Maybe I'm wrong about that, hard to say. Uh, do I want to drop something for 250 gold right now? No, I don't think so. Um, so as I was about to say, um, I've heard people argue in favor of stress relieving skills, and I get that. Stress is the worst thing. Like, a good job of those people on identifying that stress is the worst thing. Stress is way more dangerous than damage in almost all cases. Um, but, the best way to relieve stress is to end the fight because you are you are at that point relieving all of the stress for all of the attacks you would have taken had you left things alive by using stress relieving skills instead of killing things yep. okay so we have to we have to think now this part of the trip was obvious since I had literally no other way to go here do I want to go through this hallway there's a blockage in case you couldn't see there's a there's a blockage there I think we're going to step into the hallway, hit this curio, and then back out. You touch it. Aha! My, my bullshit about onyx being more common than emeralds has been vindicated. Do I want to eat for food to... Uh, I still have camps and... Yeah, what the hell. Let's, uh, let's do that. Honestly, it's looking like I may not need... I don't need two more camps to finish this dungeon. We're gonna go around just in case we get, uh, we end up with two blockages that we can't avoid on the way to finishing the mission. So we're gonna take the long way around here. And then we will camp in this room. That's my plan. Unless we make it to that room and we get some scouting information that indicates that we have another safe hallway we can walk. Uh, sure. Our Party members sure are hungry. I don't think I don't think we're gonna use our second camp, which means that I don't need to try to save food for that. Uh, honestly, at this point, I might even be willing to toss that second bundle of firewood away for loot. Yeah, I think I'm willing to do that. Uh, well, so the second bundle of firewood does have additional value in that it um, it allows you to relieve some stress at the end of the mission, saves you some gold. So what would I toss it for? Would I toss it to start a stack of portraits? I certainly wouldn't toss it for busts, nor for a single jade. The stress relief we get is definitely going to be worth more than uh, even a full stack of jades. Uh, and of course, this is a good reason not to bring eight trinkets on low-level missions so that you can jam trinkets into people's inventory. It gives you more carrying space effectively. I probably should have thought of that. Am I willing to drop firewood to start a stack of portraits? No, probably not. Portraits stack so low anyway. Terrors may indeed stalk these shadows, but yonder, a glint of gold. Okay, so we have fights in either direction. Uh, let's let's do a camp now. 
A spark without kindling. Oh, somebody's a stress a eater. Without hope. Yeah, that's a bummer. Stress eater is actually uh, a bit of a bummer. That's actually a thing that I might even consider removing. All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna go ahead and just eat the eat the food. You therapy dog, her would you? A soft nuzzle nuzzle puts everyone's heart right. You know what else is gonna relieve a lot of her stress? Critting enemies all the time. What else we got? Uh, prey. Prey is pretty weak. Prey has to hit... Um, if you hit a religious party member and two non-religious party members, you heal for 25 for a time cost of 4. Uh, which is, does not compare all that well to encourage. Like, it's better than encourage, not by a lot. Um, if you have two religious party members, this is pretty fantastic. And you gotta remember that all companions means everybody who's not her. It does not work on her. So if you theme your party a little bit, or maybe like you have a bunch of religious dudes who travel together because you'd like to bring the abomination to every mission that isn't the party of religious dudes. Uh, yep, the spirits bless your whatever, man. Let's give you a little bit more stress relief. Nobody needs healing. We don't really have any buffs. I think we're going to spend the last of our uh, time units. Yep. Set that up. Alright, I'm not too worried about um, about the status of this mission. I think we're things are going very well. As the light An ambush there wouldn't have been a big deal. Spirits are lifted we are a little food short. And um, is made clear. So we have to walk in a kind of an awkward path because we have to hit both of these rooms. We're clearing room battles here. So we may as well do this and then walk up instead of doing this. It's the same length, but it doesn't require us to spend a shovel. Same length, same number of fights, same number of curios, but doesn't require us to spend a shovel. More crests. Always useful. You never have enough crests. Uh, she's still okay at disarming traps. What do we got? Skeletons! What a surprise! Well, they- okay, they were surprised by it. They were like, humans? What a surprise! Which I guess is fair. There's no good reason for there to be humans wandering around here. Yeah, stress relief. So, um, for in case you're not familiar, uh, a crit causes a significant amount of stress relief on the person who landed the crit, and then has a chance to give stress relief to other people. A smaller amount, about half, half as much. Uh, so crits are really fantastic for damage. Sadly, not only did we not crit, we rolled a really poor uh, damage output there. Foolish horrors, brought low and driven into the mud. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about on these long—I think this is the first two camp mission I've done in the Let's Play. Is that? That's probably true. Um, so I do want to talk about one other thing. Sometimes it's worth doing a low light run. To ah, what a shame. Worth doing a low light run to bring back some extra treasure. Uh, if you have a team that's likely to survive it, low light runs can be a low light run can be pretty great. She's a slippery one, um, but you should never do low light runs on these double camp missions because you should get enough treasure to completely fill up your coffers without doing that. The ground quakes, and there you see we got some. Some uh, sympathetic stress relief. Sadly, none of that on our Vestal yet. Alright, Digby, you can do this. Almost 20% chance to crit. Oh, alright. Sufficient. She only got one stress relief because she only had one stress. Um. I don't know. There's no reason to let them attack us, right? They're going to be dead in very short order here, so... Uh, I guess we'll... The Brawler's slightly more dangerous. I don't know the numbers behind the enemies, um, but the Brawlers definitely seem to crit more often. And to reiterate, I don't know the numbers behind the enemies because I don't want to. I think it really takes something away from the game to know everything. Uh, 
I like I like the challenge of playing the game with only what I can keep inside my head. Death by inches is a still a pretty good death. Sorry, good from my perspective. It's bad, it's bad from the perspective of the guy who's dying. Yeah, at this point, I think we can we can toss the keys. All right. Uh, we will poke our head in here. Let's see what we get treasure-wise. Yes, yes, I know. Okay. That could have been worse. Sure. <laughs> yeah, go look and see what's in the torch sconce. Oh, check that out. It's a torch. I am shocked. So did that... So did that map give us nothing? Okay, no. This is, this is the result of the map. Uh, you do not get scouting data for re-entering rooms that you've already entered, so we actually have to clear all of the rooms. There was a uh, there was a battle in this far end, and a battle in that far end, and a battle in this in this out of the way corner. Okay, we didn't touch this before. Uh, I can't remember what the thing is for this. It might be anti venom. It might be medicinal herbs. She can play it. No, she's she's too good for that. She's too tough. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go make some trouble. I am not going to touch the books. I don't like to touch books. <sighs> yeah, I mean we may as well just uh, go ahead and pop some torchlight. Screwed that guy. Has she gotten? There we go. That's beautiful. Has she gotten a uh, an 18 point crit on every attack since we used sharpened spear? Is that what's happened? I believe that's what's happened. Oh, he resisted the stun. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say that was our only hope for getting out of this without taking any attacks, but it looks like we might still get there. So what are you at? 125, so 165%. This doesn't help with those. This guy has a high enough stun resist that I think he probably will actually resist that stun. So we probably weren't getting out of this without taking an attack in any case, because this guy's going to hit us at least once. Well, this guy's going to hit us once, and then we're going to have the, uh... Hmm. Maybe he's not. Yeah. All right. Size has no intrinsic merit, unless inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. You know it is, Wayne. Come on. Oh no, it's trapped. He's going to bleed for six damage, right? Yeah. Oh well. Um, I joke about uh, six damage how irrelevant, but uh, keep in mind every time you get a bad result on a curio, you are also not getting any of the good results on that curio, which means every oh no it's trapped is also I didn't get any money. Sometimes that's a real bummer, and it's worth spending um, it's worth spending resource items to avoid. Here, I don't care so much. My uh, my pockets are pretty packed. Yeah, go ahead. At least she's mostly doing it on stuff where there's no uh, there's no need to use an item on it anyway. I'm gonna keep oh wow bone two bone ra two surprised bone rabble. Definitely by a huge margin, the easiest fight in the game. Uh, let's finish him off. Okay. That's just like a little bit of free stress relief. Don't you touch it. Yeah, don't. Our vessel does not need to mess with that. Oh no! Spiders! Spiders have the capability to actually do some meaningful damage. And since... Poile... Did I decide how I was pronouncing her name? Poile? Poile? Since her judgment was more likely not to kill the spider than to kill the spider, I stunned it instead. Let's just not get attacked, right? Why don't we just always not get attacked? Not a big deal. Might blight her for one, I think? Yeah. For three. So the spitters are the only ones to do actual damage, but I almost feel like shooting the spitter is a waste of Digby's damage. 
Almost. I almost feel that way. Marhalion is tough. She'll she'll be alright. Leave a bleed? Okay, he is dead. If our Arbalest gets a turn, she's doing a heal. Okay. Ooh. Because I would rather do that with the Vestal. Again, better chance of stress relief. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and toss a heal off with the Arbalest, though, since there's no reason to attack this spider. Everybody, enjoy your health. Okay. Slowly, gently. This is how a life is taken. I said there's no reason to attack the spider, and that's not exactly true. Um, the way is lit. We're not going to end up eating this. We it's possible that I should have done that earlier, forward. actually. Uh, let me think here. So it will take two food to keep us from gaining stress on the camp. And then we can use our stress relief skills and everybody's going to end with zero. Uh, do I value that higher than... Honestly, everybody's stress is so low. Fuck it. I'd... I'm gambling on us really not even needing to de-stress at the end. Maybe that's an unrealistic uh, expectation. How this works, it's a stick and you... Okay. Alright, go look. The light. The promise of safety. Okay, this is a real. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say this is a real battle where it might take actual damage, but uh, no, probably not. Let's just lock them up for a turn while we finish this guy off, and we we reasonably might get out of this battle without getting attacked. It's totally possible. We'll see how the speed works out. They do have three speed base, which is uh, not inconsiderable. Okay, we got there. We have defeated the battle without even the possibility of stress gain. Well, actually, we're not going to be able to kill him. Okay, he did not get a turn early in the third round. Victory. But, a, but victory, a victory nonetheless. Yeah, you know, Wayne, it all it all counts, alright? It all goes into the ledger. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Alright. Good crit, free stress relief. And I mean like it's nice to crit for damage sake, but um well, Oh! A non-lethal crit! Oh no! Party is at actual zero stress right now. So let's finish him off. Yeah, see, so like, this is a party of... The, the Arbalist is tricked out, right? The Arbalist has 3-3. Three, three, but everybody else is completely unupgraded. Uh, that's not true. We did put a couple of points into uh, the Hellion. But this is what I'm talking about. This game... Um, this game is not... The terrifying monster that some people would make it out to be. It does get harder in the yellow missions and then harder again in the red missions. I would say that uh, it gets harder slightly faster than you get better. Uh, a lot of games have a have a difficulty curve where you sort of. Uh, Well, you sort of roll upwards in strength along with the enemies, which means that, you know, comparatively, nobody's actually getting any stronger. Uh, by the way, in case my tone doesn't make it clear, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, this game, I think that I think the difficulty curve is tuned uh, to move is faster right. than your character's power so level. Two will resistance. Do we know that we don't? Yeah, we don't need these shovels. That's another... I was holding on to that stack of shovels after knowing all of the information about the dungeon. I probably uh, threw away some gold. So, if that happened, I apologize. Because that's just... that's just silly bad play. Um, 
Arbalist. Soothing. I feel so soothed that I'm gonna murder the shit out of everyone I see. Oh, hey, a madman. Okay, top priority, madman. Dodge 20, but he has to go. He has a low stun, or a low stun resistance. Let's yeah, okay. Actually, should I have done that on the courtier? Because maybe I, I just want to like lay into him and finish him off. Yeah, that might have been a tactical error. Well, let's try to kill the courtier. Okay. With the madman stunned, maybe this is maybe I'm trapping myself here. But I feel like I can afford to attack everybody else. Right, like, this really, really lowers the number of uh, total attacks we take. His speed is 9, though. He's definitely going to go first. Yeah, that was a, that was a bad play. I should have uh, killed him. It's not, like, a huge amount of damage. Ooh, but he's a slippery one. Or a huge amount of damage. It's not a huge amount of stress. But it's just, like... It's stress that we didn't have to take. It's stress that I took because I'm not, uh, not thinking things through all the way. That's gonna help, though. Oh, she's the only one who gets any relief. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Hey, you don't tell me who to be. Okay, we didn't end up needing any more of our food. We stopped getting hunger events entirely partway through the dungeon, which is weird. So let me think. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna hit him with the Vestal and the Houndmaster, probably. Alright. And then there's a chance that this will just straight up kill this guy, because she loves to get crits. That's a shame. Alright, so we'll finish him off with the Arbalest. This is probably looking very familiar. Oh no, damage. Look out. So we're ending the dungeon in a pretty great place. Um, gold wise. Nice, good time for that. Alright. Completely clears those two. These nightmarish creatures can uh, be found. They can be beaten. So let's discard the food for sure and take more crests. I don't need another stack of busts. Well, let's at least open this chest, huh? Okay, a hundred more gold. Cool. Yeah, and all of the all of the curios that exist, I've already passed over, so there's no reason to go back and see if they're worth looting. So let's see where we ended up there. I wasn't uh, I wasn't counting our gold, but uh, in addition to the rarity of the trinkets increasing, the number of heirlooms you get and the amount of gold you get increases with both the mission difficulty and mission length. So here we came out of this with. Um, over 18,000 gold, if you remember that we got that, uh, actually over 19,000 gold. If, yeah, we have that trinket that I intend to sell because it doesn't do anything. Um, and I may not sell it right away. Uh, and then also you get more experience for longer missions. Uh, Thin-Blooded is, wow, totally nothing. That's pretty good. I tend to run highlight parties. That's fine, I guess. That's less fine. This is this is very close to nothing. It's so rare that we need to use our heal skills while camping. Although it's it's less rare in time, than uh, yellow and reds. Know I guess. The tragic extent of my failings. He's always saying that. I feel like I have a pretty good idea right now. I guess maybe hold on. I've been kind of thinking of the, thinking of this as the ancestor, like watching us from, I don't know, the afterlife or some some narratively removed place. But maybe these are all supposed to be things that were written in the letter that he sent to us before he capped himself. In which case, I suppose there would be a lot of repetition because that letter can only be so long. We're going to have to be remembering the same lines over and over again. Yeah, so uh, 
that deeply relevant musing aside, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Darkest Dungeon. You just you just got yourself not hired. Should I hire a jester? I have an open slot. No. I need another vestal. Maybe I'll pick up a jester at some point, just to uh, just to show them off. Uh, but for now, I'm calling it. That's the end of this episode of Darkest Dungeon. Come back next time when we, uh, I don't know, do something. Probably keep leveling up our guys and eventually maybe fight a boss. That would be neat. Yeah, we'll see you then.